Let's see if, oh, am I back? Let me know if you guys see me. Um, but yeah, this is a whole new thing. Uh, okay, good. Thank you, Triboros. Um, okay. So, anyway. Uh, this just came in earlier today. Uh, my friend, who I've worked on a lot with this stuff, flagged it for me. Um, and one of the things, I will, and I will go to it. This is at uh, publicintelligence.net. Um, I will show you how to, where to get it. It was just posted. Um, here, let's go. So, this is publicintelligence.net. Um, really terrific site. Uh, it's kind of like um, a WordPress style organization. Um, and they just try to keep uh, pushing up new documents as fast as they can. Um, and uh, they've been really cool. Like when I've sort of pointed out stuff to them, dealt with them, notified them of certain documents, they've been really responsive. And they've been working really hard on trying to look at the systems of domestic militarization. And this photo here, for example, um, very interesting story. Um, this is U.S. Army North uh, training for rapid reaction to like riot control stuff. Um, and uh, this was posted December 20th. And people haven't noticed this one yet. But basically, uh, U.S. Army North is um, training for, if you look for the word civil disturbance, I think it's in here. Hang on. Civil disturbance. Yep, there it is. So they're, they're training to respond to civil disturbance. Um, and they are basically, these are, these are, uh, uh, press photos, and they're, you know, blah, 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 training military, blah, blah, blah. But look, okay, so this stuff is, they are wearing their standard, um, civil disorder gear, right? And they also have those creepy monochrome shoulder flags that really bother me. Um, and, uh, it says that they are preparing to es respond to escalating civil disturbance situation, um, and, uh, you know, culminating training event for being a rapid response force for the U.S. Army Northern Command in support of emergencies in the United States. And this is more of this riot control gear. Um, and, and this, I mean, come on, like, this is not, like, a good scene. Like, this is showing military, um, as they, this is said to be, respond to a riot caused by unhappy simulated hurricane victims, um, you know, not a good situation. U.S. Army North Command. Um, so, yeah. And, I mean, and this was done, you know, this is PR material. Look, like, metal metal detector, um, you know, white guy scanning the African American. Nothing new there in many ways. Um, so, anyway, uh, this was just posted a few days ago. Um, and a along with other um, Northcom material. So... Uh, yeah, Triboros. Yeah, I'm, this is not. I mean, this is not a. Um, this is not a good situation, really. Um, and so, uh, what what I would say is uh, that. Um, uh, okay, right. But with the 2008 Republican National Convention here in Minnesota um, and the 2009 uh, G20 conference in Pittsburgh. Those were both national special security events, and they involved the mobilization of the National Guard at a certain level for a function of domestic militarization. However, uh, the mobilization of uh, military troops domestically in the United States can happen under some different kinds of authorities. Um, and uh, so what that means is that if they're operating under the governor, that's more like they're more like the state police. But if they are operating under the federal government, there are uh, two different types of authority, and those are restricted in different ways. And what I discovered um, was that uh, there is actually um, a... Uh, yeah, right, Traboro says it's a good thing they passed the Sandy uh, relief thing. Only way they didn't, right? So, um, it's... Uh, come on. So, let's see, okay, and I wanted to mention um, that there, you guys should learn about um, CONPLAN 3502, which is uh, called Civil Disturbance Operations. Um, it is the Northcom, the U.S. Northern Command's replacement for Garden Plot, which is a uh, much older um, plan, and uh, 
you can find old copies of Garden Plot online, um, and uh, and PublicIntelligence.net now has a bunch of the con plan material as well. And so, like when I sent them some stuff, they put it up. Basically, what I found was that uh, Con Plan 3502 is like the template plan that has a lot to do with domestic militarization, um, and uh, it includes uh, riot control, uh, it includes warrantless search and seizure. Um, it includes sort of staging facilities inside airports and stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, it uh, it's pretty significant. Is this thing gonna work? Oh boy! All right, are you guys still getting me okay? Oh, there we go. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to I'm trying to show one more link to you, and it's being pesky. Okay. Um, so um, on my own site, I. Uh, Ah, no, that's not the one. Sorry, one second. Ugh. Hello, man. Ugh, whatever. Hold on. I I'm sorry. Give me one second, guys. Um. Uh, so this is one of them. I uh, when I found this one, I, I just basically summarized a, a uh, another file that went up on PublicIntelligence.net about. And this was uh, in July, it was July 6th or so, about warning shots not being fired and this like new training thing, which public intelligence put up about civil disturbance operations. Uh, thank you, Treboros. I'm not being good with pasting these URLs. Um, so this was the follow up one, and I like, I kind of pretty immediately went on the Alex Jones show to talk about this. Um, okay, where is my earlier one? Okay. The Indie Media site is being slow tonight, so I'm gonna have to, here, just to give me a second here. Um, okay, so here is the earlier story from 2010, and this covers, um, uh, this is the 2010 one, and this covers uh, Con Plan 3502 um, and the nature of it. And so, anyway, you can check that out. Um, basically, I found files that were in National Level Exercise 2011 folder. Like, I literally found them in this folder here, which I took a screenshot of. Obviously, it's been locked down since then. But file number nine um, uh, pertained to, um, re had references to Con Plan 3502 and its development um, being run by um, the U.S. Fifth Army Chief of Staff, Richard Francie, was designing it. And it is, in fact, U.S. Army North. It's the same organization which is referred to in that new thing. Um, and so Kent State was Garden Plot, which is very similar. Um, so yeah, Con Plan 3502, Civil Disturbance Operations. And there's another one called Con Plan 3501, um, Defense Support of Civil Def Authorities, or DSCA. So it's important to understand the difference between these two. Um, we're kind of flying over this pretty quickly. Um, but I did want you to kind of understand that we've been fought. This was this was the very unique part which I found earlier. Um, this stuff that talks about what it is, its revision, um, the trigger. Now let's check this out. This is actually important for what we're going to look at next. And I wanted to first explain this to you guys. In the material that I found, it said the 3502 trigger is that the civil disturbance operation exceeds Title 32 capabilities. So this was in the material that I found. And another thing called the Domestic Operational uh, Handbook for Judge Advocates, Domestic Operational Law Handbook for Judge Advocates, has more about this stuff. And um, this stuff called SIDCONs, or Civil Disturbance Conditions, this structure has existed since the 60s. Um, and so whenever you hear about Rex 84 and stuff, um, that is relevant. Um, and inside the footnotes of this thing, you find a lot of stuff that includes says, Garden Plot was published in 1991, and Garden Plot has been replaced by Con Plans. And specifically, it says that C Northcom Con Plan 3502. And so basically, it does basically say that, you know, Con Plan 3502 um, replaced uh, this um, uh, Garden Plot system. So anyway, uh, that. Um, uh, Anyway, it's all tied into this stuff. And so what we found at the Republican National Convention in 2008 was that the U.S. Northern Command, or NORTHCOM, had, if you look where my cursor is, had all these seats in the command center. And so 
to me, essentially, it was very close to a live exercise of Comet Plan 3502. We also know that the um, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, or NGA, um, also had a seat in the command center. It's a little hard to read on this, but I believe that was their spot. So, so that's a Pentagon um, spy agency that does satellite stuff. And they had to get a special privacy waiver to do whatever the hell they were doing. You can actually look on the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's own website. They had a newsletter. They talked about going to the RNC and the DNC. That is important stuff. Um, and so, anyway, so Con Plan 3501 is a military template. I would look over this, look at how this stuff is work, is set up, um, and, uh, you know, sort of the way this stuff is supposed to fit together. Anyway, um, any questions? <laughs> little disturbance operations. So, um, I just wanted to kind of quickly review that because we have new information that pertains to this. So, thank you for your... So, um... I just want to uh, thank you for your uh, patience in that pretty brief rundown, um, just because it's like, uh, you know, one of those areas where you don't expect to find new information, and it's pretty weird, um, but once you start finding it, you, you know, you got to keep on kind of chasing it around, um, and we got new information here that I really wanted you guys to see. So please take a look at uh publicintelligence.net again on their front page there's a bunch of new stuff about northcom and you can just pull it up for yourself and and i think because it's been the holidays nobody's paid attention to this stuff um and so here is the um uh the doctrine publication for uh defense support of civil authorities like this is um you know supposedly the more benign one like this is con plan 3501 stuff um, and look, it's like, oh, look, we send our helicopters into the flood, you know, that's what it is. And it's like, but the reality is like, because so much resources go into the Pentagon, that's why the military is kind of, you know, stepping in for this. Like they are, you know, looking at doing this stuff and, um, domestic operations are constrained by various laws. You know, it's, it's all real weird. It's a really big crossover. So when people say, oh, the domestic military, blah, 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 it's like, like people start looking at DSCA to begin with, um, you know, all of nation approach, state national guard forces, and see this is this like title ten. Remember when I said you know exceeds T thirty two capabilities. Remember when I said trigger for thirty five con plan thirty five zero two is exceeds title thirty two capabilities. That is what this reference is. So when the state governors command the state national guard in title thirty two, then. Um, Con Plan 3502 is not active, but when it exceeds that, that would make it um, more like the martial law scenario that we're familiar with. Anyway, so I have not even looked through this document yet, but I just wanted to quickly give you the heads up that it is there um, and is a very good thing to research and get your head around. Um, okay, another document um, that actually is worth seeing on a different topic is this White House National Strategy for Information Sharing and Safeguarding. It's pretty ooky spooky um, and talks a lot about um, the, uh, something called the Information Sharing Environment and Suspicious Activity Reports. Um, I just thought that was, it was pretty ooky spooky stuff. Um, so, uh, this is standard operating procedures for NORTHCOM um, from early 2011. Uh, let's see. I just have only looked at this a tiny bit. But, you know, concept of execution. These are, you know, laying out the basic structure of these different plans. It's just, ugh, it's so sketchy. It just goes on and on and on. Northcom's sort of battle staff. And it's like, what is this command for? Like, why does this exist? You know, like, here's how they set up all these, like, complex missions and stuff. And... Like, I mean, for those of you that aren't from, like, NORTHCOM is U.S. Northern Command. It is the U.S., Canada, you know, like, it is not, like, a Middle Eastern military command. It was created, the United States Northern Command was created in 2002. And that U.S. Army North, this stuff that you saw a minute ago, this stuff, this is U.S. Army North, which is their unit of the Army. It's their main command. So, 
so this stuff, this Norscom stuff, and this stuff, they're related. Like, bottom line. So, anyway, um, that was not the main one I wanted to show you. The main one I wanted to show you is, um, where I was trying to explain the Title 10, Title 32 thing. This is U.S. Northcom publication, Title 10 Dual Status Standard Operating Procedures. And this, Dual Status Commanders, if you guys, if anyone has heard about the Council of Governors, um, that was a weird thing that has popped up, and this has a lot to do with the Council of Governors. Um, and so, uh, yeah, pretty acronym laden. Um, let, me, uh, let me hang on a second here. I'm going to open up the file. Um, Anyway, I, I'm not even going to get into it too much, but again, I just kind of want to throw it out there. Um, it is interesting stuff. Um, and uh, so here's the document. You can download it yourself. Check it out. It's from January 2012, less than a year old. It's great. Um, yeah, so let's see. How, uh, it's on 200 pages, so I'm not going to get through this whole thing. But, um, you know, this just sort of shows the flow of all these big honking publications <sighs> the whole idea behind it uh, let's see, I'm gonna, maybe I'll just kinda skip down and find some fun charts did it, uh, man, it's just, it's such a labyrinth of structures and you know, public affairs slash communication strategy you know, checklists, this is pretty comprehensive stuff um, more checklists more acronyms, more checklists, more checklists, more faces, more checklists, more checklists. More checklists. Anyway, uh, let's see. Decision points, decision tables, good lord. Okay, here we go, man. The Council of Governors and the President have identified the need for dual status commanders to unify the response efforts, and they have identified Title 10 deputy commanders to Lloyd Joint support force staff elements that integrate with the state level dual status commanders drive unity of effort to both the title 32 which is the governor controlled national guard and state active duty which is you know activated under the governor and and this title 10 this like special powers type stuff so, you know, oh my god, this is going to go on. But anyway, um, the hierarchy of documentation. Con ops, that's concept of operations. Oh my goodness. Gotta have a pyramid. That's a little weird. I don't know what's going on there. But a lot of pyramid. So, training, certifications. Ooh. Authorize, consent, state governor. So, yeah, I mean, this is like memorandums of understanding involving activated military troops inside states. And how you would request, requesting Title X support for exercises, training, or real-world events, you know. And then they basically, you know, link in with this weird new military structure. Um, emergency no notice events so this top level has FEMA stuff the state level talks about emergency operations centers NORTHCOM headquarters activate the battle staff activate title 10 deployments um, uh, more title 10 stuff um, NORTHCOM there so direct this and that ooh what's that Come on. Hmm. I might, have, I might have to try running this in a different browser program because that's not working right. Um, here's the phases Just when they activate. It, uh, shape, anticipate, respond, operate, stabilize, transition. Um, sorry, I gotta look at your chat guys in a minute. Ooh, here we go. Ah, right, here we go. Oh, this is kind of interesting. The President, the Governor, Homeland Security, this Joint Field Office stuff, Dual Status Commanders, Title 10, Title 32, Title 10, 32, Title 10, 32, 
National Guard Bureau. So it's like this merger, you know? Like, there was this idea that, um, you know, that this stuff is uh, supposed to be separate, and it's not. Okay. Uh, anyway. I might have to just kind of quit on this tonight, unless I can find some more, like, sweet charts. Um, let's see. Staff and actions. I'm just going to kind of skim over the thumbnails and see if I can pull out any good charts for you. Um, whoa. Status tracking dashboard. Like, I wonder if those are real people. Captain Michael Martin from Minnesota. Huh. Uh, well, maybe give them a call, everybody. And I'll be like, hey, what are you guys doing? Some weird stuff. Operational tracker. Uh, yeah, yeah. God, this stuff is so intricate. And it's like, do you think that they're not going to set this stuff up and use it? Like, is it good for them to use it? Like, what, what the hell does all this add up to? What does it mean, you know? Like, the military is not really known for its agility. Like, it's got some helicopters, but dang, man. Wow. Look at that. Now that's some bureaucracy. Tier 4, Tier 3, Tier 2, Tier 1. Man. I don't know. It's just it's crazy. Ooh, look at this. In oh, typo. Integrated battle rhythm for crisis action planning execution. Single planning cycle day for State Emergency Operations Center. FEMA. DCO. Uh, I'm not sure what DCO means in this. Joint Terrorism Task or Joint Task Force and NORTHCOM. Battle rhythm is the most significant thing you do. The trick is to marry the cycles. So... Looks like a lot of meetings to me, but whatever. Yeah, so phase three begins when Title 10 Defense Support of Civil Authority starts. So, what they're saying is that when Con Plan 3501 really kicks in, that's what this is about. And, oh, nice. They have chat, XMPP chat rooms. Well, that's interesting. So they're using Jabber. That's a fancy way of saying that it costs a zillion dollars. For, can you imagine how much they charge to set up that XMPP Jabber server? Yay, yay, yay. Met, uh, SAR... Eh, that is not suspicious activity reports. This is probably... S one. Uh, I don't know. I'm losing track of my acronyms, everybody. Um, medical storyboard. Um, again, maybe this would look different when you open it in a different app. Possibly. Okay. Personnel. Intelligence. See, that's the thing. Like, How can they have this intelligence crap like domestically? Not good. You know, all right, and then strategic communications, public affairs. At least this thing isn't censored, but blah blah blah. Sorry, just kind of skimming through quick here. Mostly text. There aren't a lot of cool diagrams. Eh, I want some crazy diagrams. Who's with me? Training, more training. Elements of task forces. Right, I'm on page 92, by the way. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned my page numbers. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, um, so, op here are some interesting links, I guess. These are all inside Northcom. So, you know, there's a PDF with DSCA on it. They're all, you know, not a lot of references to Con Plan 3502 that I've noticed so far, but... Establishment of a dual status commander. Pretty crazy stuff. Alright, so we're coming up to page 100. And these are like, so he's getting all these crazy checklists and... You know, media contact report, intelligence information report, after action report, joint personal st personnel status report, you know, blah, blah. <sighs> mm. Mass casualties, aid stations, hot refueling, and 
various sort of op sections and example forms. Hmm. Vigilant Guard. Uh, Vigilant Guard I, is an exercise, I think. Um, so, they have these conduct of security ops. That's good. Mm -hmm. Alright, so yeah, page 109. Page 110. Social messaging. Uh, public affairs messaging. Support to civilian authorities. Save lives. Reduce human suffering. Mitigate further property damage. What? Property damage. Um, so this is like, you know, description of an exercise. Pendleton. Mobile Field Hospital. Arizona Medical Evacuation Simulated. Um, personnel Equipment Checklist. Land Cable. Blah, blah, blah. Comms Equipment. Ooh, an Iridium Phone. Level 1 Capability. 25 Foot Network Cable. Da, 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 da. Anyway, um, oop, that's kind of good. Uh, this is page 122. Ooh, FEMA. Operation Section Chief, FEMA Logistics. Can this be met in-house by FEMA? So you can clearly see that this is part of the reason why FEMA is such an awesome flow of efficiency. Blah, 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 statement of work, work orders. Oh my gosh. I mean, you know, it's just, all this stuff is such a jumble. Ooh. This is kind of weird. Acknowledgement. Strange. Database assignment mission views. You know, and it's not like they ever want to, like, post this stuff publicly. Like, if they would just figure out to publish, like, what people need help with, and, like, get it out there, it'd be a lot better. Command organization. Again, you know, these, these structure. It's Title 10 and Title 32 authorities. Um, Alright, yeah, so we're down on page 128. Just trying to zip right through. Um, ooh, hey, hey, Portland. Is PDX still around? Here's some stuff about Portland. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> the connection is untested. You Right, Treboros. Yeah, you won't be able to get into any of that stuff unless you somehow have access. But uh, if PDX is still around, um, what was this from? Uh, example... Uh, Downtown Portland. Okay, so we're on page like 128. Um, Bothell, Washington. So. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, a scenario a 7.8 earthquake has occurred in Portland, Oregon, and they have designated Oregon to lead the combined military response effort to FEMA, and they have activated Region 10 uh, defense coordinating officers the, the DCO that was a chart that I showed you guys um, in the Comp Plan 3502 stuff so the DCO um, and a DCE that's like the unit of military officials that work in the FEMA regional office and um, I've not seen a good chart in this document but in the other one you can see it so there's a lot of stuff like this is what they would do in Portland to title 10 units with the dual status commander So it's so weird. I don't I don't get why they would invent dual status commanders, but you know, this is the crap that's in these National Defense Authorization Act stuff, you know, is stuff that makes this kind of thing legal ish. Uh, but of course it all runs on Microsoft. That's kind of the key, isn't it? Alright. So yeah, this this does describe I mean this this should be interesting to people in in Portland for one thing, about what um, they would do in those things. Uh, I don't know. Not too much about Con Plan 3502 that I've seen so far. This is mainly just do this this DSCA stuff, huh? Um, these like endless checklists. Oh, gosh, no good charts, just boring checklists. Bow, bow, bow. Has the Joint Task Force Legal Officer been consulted regarding the use of force? Okay, now we're talking. Have the attached forces and force readiness available? Or is the National Guard ready? Can they 
require elevation and superior commander. That's a little interesting. So this is the uh, J of whatever, page 153. Um, title 10, title 10. Um, uh, working with relief organizations, hello, Red Cross. Public affairs. Um, mm, various units. National Guard. Anyway, bada 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 Okay. Anyway, um, we're almost there. I, I, and then I'm going to call it for the night. But I just wanted to kind of. You know, introduce you guys to another weird one. Oh, look, more links. Aha! Oh, here we go. Here's finally a little bit of pay dirt. Um, uh, under page 167, Defense Supporters of Authorities, a permissible military support to civilian law enforcement. Um, the old stuff from the 90s, MACD, Military Assistance for Civil Disturbances. Um, uh, this uh, acquisition of information can a person's organization not affiliated with the Department of Defense, 1980. That does have to do with like what intel can they hold. This also governing the ability, you know, DOD uh, components um, affecting U.S. persons, uh, civil disorders. Finally, some fun stuff. This is interesting. Okay, um, military support to civil authorities from 2008. Um, but again, this is not the same as Con Plan 3502, which they are not referencing here. Um, more weird civil support stuff. Aha! Civil disturbances. Field Manual 319.15. Um, you know, wait, let's see what happens if we click on this. Wait for it. Uh, move, link move. Okay. We're really having fun here, people. <gasps> Ooh, how about that? I have seen field manual number three, nineteen, fifteen around. Um, it is interesting, and I'm glad that we landed at it. Um, yeah, maybe I'll send you the link on the chat. How about that? So this this is available in another format. This is kind of like the Con Plan thirty five oh two manual. Um, Anyway, so that, that was where I just found myself. Um, and, um, yeah, it uh, has to do with riot control, non-lethal weapons, civil disturbance formations, operations in confinement facilities, a.k.a. using the military to put down prison riots, um, legal stuff, urban terrain, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, you can find that. that again, this is called... Uh, Field Manual 319, or Field Manual 1915, all right? Um, so you can find that elsewhere. But that's related to this Con Plan 3502 stuff as well. Anyway, um, so yeah, we could, so yeah, that, that link worked. Um, it was forwarded, but it worked. Um, Aha! Support to special events. The long nightmare of national special security events. Um, some other stuff. National Guard domestic operations. I mean, I, there's probably some fruitful stuff in here. I think people will probably want to look at this. Um, intelligence components affecting U.S. persons. Um, yeah. So that eh, a couple of interesting URLs in there. Um, blah blah blah. Some toolkits. Blah 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 blah. Useful internet links. Some stuff. Disaster stuff. FEMA. National Defense. Okay, uh, NIMS, National Incident Management System. That is worth checking out. That is kind of um, a large, overarching, um, kind of weird management thing. Um, it's definitely worth knowing about. Um, all right, FEMA. So here's FEMA's website, National Incident Management System. It, consider it kind of the Microsoft operating system of disasters. Um, that might be one way to look at it. U.S. Army Corps of Engineer. That was how I found that weird stuff. The Federalist Papers. All right, fair enough. Um, you know, all this stuff should probably be checked out. You gotta pass it around. Ooh, glossary of terms. 
blah, blah, blah. Dual status commanders. You might want to just skip straight to this part to kind of get the hang of this crap. Um, and, and there are citations, which is good. Um, federalism. Whoops. They will always play a role. Homeland security is a concerted effort. There's also homeland defense. And homeland defense is an obscure phrase that people don't know about. Um, and that seems to be a more military version of the same idea. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. National Incident Management System, like I was just talking about, right there. Um, so we're down the glossary. We're almost done. Page 178. Um, the National Response Framework is the thing that they activate when there's a hurricane or whatever. Um, a state active duty. Um, tactical Command. Bum, bum, bum. Aha. And Title 10 and Title 32 forces. Um, blah, blah, blah. Acronyms. There we go. All of the acronyms. All the acronyms. All the acronyms. And knowledge and information management. Look, a VPN. And a chat program. And Cisco. And a Blackberry. And Google Earth. And ArcGIS desktop. Common operating picture visualization. Look, see, I told you. Jabber. I knew it. Jabber. Anyway, common operating picture is when they sort of whiz-bang looking like, whoa, look at this cool display we got type thing going on. Ooh, Sipper, Nipper, those are the, you know, secure networks. Oh, wow, there's all the networks here. SharePoint, of course. U.S. Army North, SharePoint. Because all of this crap is on Microsoft. And, uh, ooh, the <laughs> NZ J36 IM cam team will conduct cyber patrols to check in exercising these capabilities. Oh, lordy. Oh, my God. Using a BlackBerry? What is this? There's some host VPN numbers and stuff, like Northcom, like Outlook. Like, look, God, Jesus. It's just an embarrassment. Look at it. XMPP. Can you imagine how much money they forked over to set this crap up? It's, it's unbelievable. Anyway, um... HSIN, that is the horrible homeland security thing. That is probably worth looking into. Um, you know, all this stuff runs on SharePoint. All the fusion centers run on SharePoint. Everything runs on SharePoint, which is the Microsoft file sharing crap. Okay, and this is the last page, everybody. Um, yeah, look, XMPP chat, and Adobe, email, Blackberry. More email. Ooh, emergencies. Sneaker net. I like that. Emergency file exchange is sneaker net. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, more portals. Battle rhythm. Huh. Let's see. It's going to let me. Eh. Can't find portal.state.mil. Huh. Must be somewhere deep in the military zone. Anyway. Yeah. So that's a new one, guys. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's about all I got for now. Um, you know, I think I'll probably just like to leave it there. Um, this broadcast has gone, what, almost more than an hour and a half. Um, and I appreciate your patience. I have not, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I just, uh, wanted to point out the OWS stuff as well as the new document that I just saw and I think it would be fun to make a quick run through myself because I have not looked at this thing before um, and uh, I hope it's informative I, I didn't want to you know kind of um, put out a bunch of sort of paranoia and arm waving stuff I think that uh, the, the devil's in the details but you know um, like, like for example statistical accomplishments people need to know about that um, and people don't know about that and how that like motivates the behavior of bureaucracies. I think that that's pretty important personally. Um, and, uh, so it's pretty key stuff. And, um, you know, like I said, public intelligence.net, they, they do a really good job. Like keep, uh, they keep chugging this stuff up. I totally support their work. Um, I don't really see too many questions, so I think I'll probably leave it there. I'm pretty, I'm pretty tired. Um, it's, it's late. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it was really nice to, 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 catch up with you guys um, and sort of kick another couple more cans down the road and I think uh, 
with these things, it takes some patience to work through, you know. Um, and uh, but uh, anyway, it's been really good to talk with you guys. Uh, it's been a, been a while since I've jumped straight on Global Rev to kind of lay a bunch of craziness out there. And um, yes, exactly. We need to keep digging through our, our chats and stuff. Uh, thank you, Traboros. Um, and uh, you know, as we come into New Year, 2013, um, you know, I think if we can just kind of uh, work on try to work on good research, try not to overhype things. I mean, I, I will say this. Um, for example, uh, you know, you, you always, everyone always wants to look for a good story or whatever. Um, and uh, like uh, over the weekend, my friend was down at the Vikings game, and he saw um, a, a drone flying around above the Vikings game, and uh, took some photos of it. Um, he also saw a, a TSA uh, Viper team, which means like some something intermodal protection and response team or whatever. Um, and so it's a, another Homeland Security group, and they've been getting with the NFL. And uh, so, um, and so I did a quick post on that, um, and and you know I tried to tweet it out, and was like, hey, you know, like sketchy drone. Um, but uh, I thought I thought it was a Homeland. It could be very well be a Homeland Security drone because Homeland Security was already there. And then um, uh, some people with the local Pioneer Press newspaper, you know tweeted back like oh no this is belongs to some production company it's not homeland security but they didn't even say the name of the production company which is kind of annoying and it, it also didn't appear in my twitter feed even though they tweeted at me i don't get why that happened um and so it was just kind of pesky that i was like oh i was i was so convinced i was like yeah this this is probably a homeland security drone and now we still don't know what company it is but it's probably not homeland security it was probably just a commercial project probably um, so, you know, it, um, so it's just important not to, you know, get overexcited about something where you think you really finally got this, this time, you know, and, you know, it's probably good to just sort of step back and relax, and I got to kind of, sort of, maybe jump the gun on this drone issue. I thought it was still interesting. We still don't know what the name of the company is, so. Anyway, the, the, yeah, the drone thing is happening, and, um, it was still worth writing about, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just thought... It was a good reminder. And there was another time earlier this summer, too, where I thought that one of these fusion center sites, the one about uh, sus suspicious activity reports, or SARs, and the ISE, or information sharing environment, um, I thought the website was sort of disappearing and going offline, because the place I was at, the, the DNS lookup stopped working, and, and I'd seen them uh, scrub one of those sites before. And so I was like, oh, I think the site's going down. So I zipped it up, mirrored it up. Um, quickly made copies, and uh, and then the site didn't ultimately go down, and so I, I sort of felt like I'd made a big deal over nothing, so, you know, you do get a couple false positives or whatever, but uh, you know, just try to be accurate if you can and minimize the speculation, I think, um, that, put the, that puts things on a good ground, but um, I would not say I'm always perfect in this regard, so, as with anybody, um, but, yeah, you know, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't have a real good conclusion, I just try to stay humble, is a good idea so that that is my message for now anyway guys um thank you for tuning in again um i am dan uh and my uh handle out there is hong pong um and uh if you do if you guys do want to check out my website that's at uh hongpong.com with my crazy ridiculous banner um the banner has two jetpacks on it i don't know how i could top that kind of banner but anyway um, and then, you know, on, on, you can follow me on Twitter as well. It's always fun. Try to get the good stuff up. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. So as, as always, uh, you know, in 2013, keep on making some discoveries. Um, I think my computer is kind of bogging down and, uh, I think I'll, uh, leave it right there. So you guys have a good night. Good to be with you. And I will, I will load these, uh, videos, both these discussions on my YouTube page and um, uh, that's at youtube.com slash hongpong. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. You guys have a good night.